Hi guys, Elliot here, Chief Plonker, and in this video I'll be running through the design process of our London Zoo pop-up in 2019. I'll be talking over concept art paintings that I did, and I'll be telling you a bit about what we set out to achieve, the creative pitfalls along the way, and about the overall project and the great work that London Zoo does around the world. So, to start off a little, how about a bit of background information on the zoo and the project brief? We approached the zoo in spring 2019 to see if they wanted a nine-hole course for the summer. Um, we pitched them the concept of the course would be a course that highlights nine of the great conservation projects they're working on around the world. These nine projects would theme the nine mini golf holes. So, um, as the overall theme of the course, the ethos of the zoo and our way of working is to be as eco-friendly as possible we wanted to minimize the amount of waste we did as so we used a second-hand golf course that we already had and tried to limit the amount of new materials that we used where possible so for those who don't know london zoo it is run by the zoological society of london who are a charity set up over a hundred years ago and founded the world's first zoo london zoo they also run a safari park just outside of london and from the two all of the profits go towards saving the world's wildlife. This is an outdoor course and we needed a hut, so that's what you can see me drawing there. We used timber that was already in our workshop. Timber was actually a bit heavy, but there we go. It made a very good sturdy hut for the staff and lasted very happily outdoors. So going on to hole number one. Uh, this hole was designed around the concept of animal enrichment. Animal enrichment is the part of the great work that the zookeepers at ZSL do to make the sanctuaries as pleasant, fun and as close to the natural habitat as possible for the animals. For the monkeys, they have swings, tyres to play in and food tubes to eat from. The lions are like a nice tall plinth to sit on and overlook their estate. Um, the hole, unfortunately, could not be completely completed as planned um, due to some health and safety concerns around little golfers clambering all over it and maybe hurting themselves. But we did make sure that every hole across the course had an informational sign which told people about the great work the zoo does and about each of the hole's projects that they are based on. So uh, that's the animal enrichment hole. So, hole number two was designed around the idea of husbandry and veterinary practices of the zoo. At ZSL London, the um, animals come first. The expert vets, devoted zookeepers and specialist animal welfare officers are always dedicated to ensuring they provide everything the animals need to stay happy and healthy. I actually found this hole quite hard to come up with an idea for. Um, it just seemed too abstract for me. Uh, but in the end, the idea of a stethoscope came to mind, using the tubes and pipes of the stethoscope. Um, so the ball could roll down towards the hole if you got a shot on target, or the ball would spit back down the hill to you again if you did not. Um, that should show up in shot any section. There we are, I'm sketching it on now. So unfortunately we didn't make this prop, um, but at least it sort of gives you an idea of how to be creative with a concept um, and using the sort of physics of mini golf at the same time. Cool, so moving on to hole number three. This hole was based around the River Thames, London's hidden wildlife secret. Did you know that porpoise, seals and seahorses live in the Thames alongside cockney eels and smelt? which is a fish that smells of cucumber. Maybe you didn't know that. Um, many of these amazing animals are born and raised in the river, or Mother Thames, as we Londoners like to call her. Together with partners and volunteers, ZSL are making great progress from being declared biologically dead in the 1950s. The River Thames is now a hub of life, thanks to the dedicated conservation efforts of the good people at the zoo. So this was another hole that required a long straight run, so we used our loop to go with it. In the theming, we would thought we made the loop feel like a wave rolling down the Thames with reeds and seals either side of it. Our graphic designer, Jason, came up with some great geometric animals for us to use across the course, and this one got some seals. So, on to the next hole, hole number four. Uh, this hole is about the reintroduction of the Shimitar horned oryx to Chad. Um, by the late 1990s, the species was believed to have gone extinct in the wild after the last remaining individuals in Chad and neighbouring Niger had died out. 
Since then, though, the species has only existed in captivity with over 220 zoological institutions contributing to a global captive breeding program. Together with partners and sponsors, in January 2017, the second phase of the reintroduction program was initiated, with a group of 14 oryx being released into the reserve. In this hole, we wanted to create a totally different colour palette to match the habitat of the Chad Desert. Um, as you'll see as the picture goes on, we went from a green carpet to a beige carpet, which actually got pretty muddy and pretty horrible, so we probably won't be doing that again. But the hole looked great. Um, we used light bark chippings around the hole to um, give a feel for the environment, and we planted grasses and reeds to tie it in. Unfortunately, we couldn't get any of those great savanna trees as we have in the drawing, but there we go. Jason did do us a nice oryx, and there he is, boom. And um, we put him up and another friend of his, as long with a along with a information board to go with the whole, to teach everyone about the great work that they are doing in Chad. So, on to hole and number five. Critically endangered and present nowhere else in the world, the Sumatran tiger is one of those species most vulnerable in the social and economic changes currently occurring in Indonesia. ZSL's team in Sumatra is dedicated to stopping tiger attacks on livestock and people. Uh, they are working hard dealing with the problem tigers. Um, a last resort is to move the animal to a new area. This is called trans location translocation a problem pro translocating a problem tiger is difficult and a complex task as i'm sure you could imagine um, for this hole we tried to replicate the jungle dwellings of these tigers we also tried something different with jason's illustrations we wanted to symbolize the rarity of these uh, creatures in the wild so we attempted to create a visual illusion which you can see here um, so the idea was that you could only fully see the tiger when you're standing on the tee, otherwise your angle, the four boards would not match up um, and the force perspective wouldn't align, so you would sort of just see these abstract shapes. Um, it was an idea that we wanted to do more across the golf course, um, but we just had such a difficult time on the build for this one. The team worked really hard over the seven days to um, construct the course on site. And because we were coming straight up to the May half term, we just could not get the work done. Um, Mr. Trump was also staying next door at the American Embassy and his helicopters and security protocols were made doing anything on site. An absolute nightmare. So um, the guys worked really hard, but sometimes you just can't get every um, challenge completed that you want. So, on to the next hole, hole number six. Um, as a member of the Great British Oceans, ZSL is working to protect marine environments of UK overseas territories. In February 2015, with their partners, ZSL launched their Great British Oceans campaign, calling on the UK government to create global, globally significant and fully protected marine reserves in a number of the UK overseas territories. These are the Ascension Islands in the Atlantic, the Pitcairn Islands in the South Pacific, and the South sandwich islands in the southern ocean so for this hole we had a wider patch of land to play with and it led to the footpath and we had not done a quarter pipe yet so we figured why not make one and we did that in two parts as it was a pretty damn big wave we made in the end so the uh, sharks were added as a little bit of an obstacle as you play around them we added a crest to the wave and painted it um, the whole hole was constructed out of timber and we had sort of two meter run up to it and two meter run off from it, as you can see in the drawing there. Um, great hole. People really enjoyed it as now living in our Plonk Shoreditch venue right next to our volcano, looking very much like a Hawker's Eye painting or a Quicksilver logo. So that was our great British wave. Going on to the next hole, which is bioluminescent bio coral reefs. So since 2010, ZSL has been working with many other organisations to better understand the astounding array of wildlife that live in the British Indian Ocean Territory and has been making significant advances in marine science and conservation. We wanted to try to create these wonderful underwater worlds inside one of the cabins on the site. We created bespoke UV fluorescent painted murals and lit them with UV lights to make the world really pop and glow. 
So, hole number eight. Um, across the world, as you know, millions of single-use plastic water bottles are used every year and discarded every day. Here in the UK, the average person gets through 150 bottles a year, and in the USA, it's 170 a year. Uh, many of these enter our rivers and waterways and end up in the ocean, where they kill marine creatures, spoil our coastlines, and damage livelihoods. Um, for this hole, we really just wanted to highlight this issue, um, and we used a single use plastic bottles as ball runs on the wall of the cabin but unfortunately that was not uh, green lit by the zoo as they didn't want any plastic used at all on site um, which is fair enough so we ended up um, using bamboo instead and as you see I think as the drawing develops I start colouring in over those plastic bottles with bamboo there we go um, this was a tricky hole to make again another um, victim of lack of time and um, and just general difficulty on site, but we still made a great hole there and raised the issue that the zoo um, was raising as well with their overall conservation work around the world, you know, pleading with people not use plastic, they don't use plastic in the zoo, and there's no one-use plastic from any of their vendors. Um, and hole number nine was really just a thank you, a thank you to all the people who paid to play the course, and a notice to say that all the profits from the course would go to saving some of the wildlife and habitats mentioned across the nine holes. The project was really special for us as it showed how Plonk can work with a big institution to quickly work together and make a difference in the world whilst entertaining people of all ages. Um, so it was really for us a great project to be a part of. It was a great summer and uh, we're really happy to say th much thanks to London Zoo for having us. Um, so thank you guys for watching today. If you want to know more about the project and see more shots of the course, please click through on the left. And if you want to see more design projects from our team, click through on the right. Um, please subscribe to our videos, share them, come back, see more Plonk info, how-tos and video diaries on our other channels. Thanks guys, take care, all the best.